guys, welcome to the end of a very busy day. As you can hear, I have my friends all around me, Mr. and Mrs. Frog and all their friends. So I hope you can hear me. <laughs> but it's been crazy weather here over the past few days. We have went, from the last time I saw you, actually we had a frost and I was putting all the blankets and the sheets and everything on our garden. And two days later we had another and it was a lighter frost, luckily. So I had to break everything back out and do it again. But since then, we had 80 degrees, and then over these past few days, we've had rain. Yesterday, we had an inch and three quarters of rain. Today, we had an inch of rain. So I thought I would go out to the garden and kind of look at things, and I looked at my radishes, and you guys know what happens to radishes when you get too much water. They literally like blow up and they kind of crack open. So I was frantically out there, gonna harvest a whole bunch of them, and I wanted to bring you guys along because I wanted to show you a recipe that I think you're gonna love. And I know some of you guys are saying, no, no, I don't like radishes. But I want you to try this recipe if you don't like radishes because I bet you will like it because it is kind of like an alternative to eating potatoes. It gives it a much more subtle taste. So I want you to stay tuned because I think you're really gonna like it. So since our spring season has begun, I have just been going out to the garden and just kind of picking here and there. So today you guys get to celebrate my, I guess my first real harvest coming in and I brought a bunch of radishes in. And I really like these kind of radishes because um, these are called the Easter Basket Mix. I get them from rareseeds.com or Baker Creek Seed Company. And I like them because you get a variety of the radishes and it's just fun. Some of them are, you know, pink, some of them are red, some of them are purple yellow, white, and so I just really like that. So every year I generally like to um, get that kind of pack. But what I did was is I went to the garden, I pulled them out, I washed them, I cut off the roots, and then I cut off the tops. Now the last video that I did, I talked a lot about the greens because I love the greens, and a lot of people throw the greens out. Don't do it because there's so much you can do with them. They are loaded in so many vitamins and things that we need for our body. And in this day and age, we really are learning and talking a lot more about your immune system. And what's cool about your greens, and especially the root too, is they're loaded in vitamin C. So vitamin C is something that we definitely need for our immune system. So what I'm gonna do is save these greens, and I'm gonna use them over the next couple days. I'm gonna make them, we're gonna have stir fry, they're great in stir fry. I think I'm gonna go ahead tomorrow morning and go ahead and put some of these greens in with a little butter and kind of, um, like wilt them down a little bit and have them with eggs. And then another time, maybe when I have a salad, I'm gonna cut them up and put them in my salad. You could use them as an alternative to lettuce on a sandwich. So there's lots of ways you can use these greens. So do not throw them away, don't give them to your chickens. They will last a very long time in the, in the refrigerator. So if you kinda, you know, go ahead and put them in there, they will look good for a while. So, you know, at least three, four days. So a little note, if you guys are gonna get these from maybe the farmer's market or the grocery store, I would go ahead and wash them in a solution of maybe, you know, a quarter part of vinegar and water and then wash them and let them rinse off. These are from my garden. We just had an inch of rain. All I did was rinse them off. I knew where they came from, so I think I'm okay with that. So I just used water. So now they're soaking in water. Some of the bigger ones I cut, cut in quarters and then the regular size one, I just cut them in half so that they'll cook evenly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out and then I'm gonna get ready and show you the ingredients that we're gonna use for our recipe today. I just drained the water from the radishes and now all you're gonna need is some type of oil. So it's your choice if you guys wanna use avocado oil, if you wanna use olive oil, if you wanna use coconut oil, if you wanna maybe use um, butter. I wouldn't use butter because it doesn't have as high a smoke point. My choice is to use ghee, which is uh, butter, and you're using the actual butter oil. It's where you take away the lactose and casein from it. And I have a really good video I did on it if you guys wanna find out how to make it at your house, just like Molly does. And uh, I'm gonna use ghee, and you're gonna need about a tablespoon of the oil of your choice. So I'm just gonna pour that on top in my pan. I really love ghee because it has such a robust flavor. It gives, it enhances the flavor of everything. And if you guys aren't making it, because it's very expensive at the grocery store, I would suggest trying to make it because you will save a lot of money. And look at how beautiful this is. Doesn't this look fake? I mean, it's gorgeous. This is from spring butter. That's what happens when we get this new grass and the animals are grazing on that wonderful new fresh grass or getting off the hay. 
Look at the vitamins we're getting out of this. Isn't it just gorgeous? So I love this time of year. I try to stock up and get as much as I can and, and make as much as I can. So this is the ghee. And all I'm gonna do is put some of my unrefined real salt from Redmond. I'm gonna go ahead and put about a teaspoon a salt and then some garlic nothing's better than salt and garlic so I'm going to use my garlic flakes that I make but you can use garlic powder you can use fresh minced garlic whatever you got if you guys want to put dill in there fennel seeds are really good in this too you know anything you want whatever your tastes are mix it all up Everything is mixed up now, so I preheated the oven to 400 degrees, and I'm gonna get my baking dish, and we're gonna put it all together. Make sure that the radishes are spread out. You don't want one on top of each other so that they'll all cook evenly because you want them to kind of get crunchy. Just think about when you're cooking this, just like you would roast potatoes or like a french fry or you could cook, you want it kind of crunchy. So that's why the oven needs to be at 400 and you want them spread out really good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put them in the oven for about 35 minutes. I'm gonna check them at 35 minutes and see if I wanna cook them a little bit more or they might be done. So we'll be back in a little bit. While the radishes are cooking in the oven, I kind of want to talk about radishes a little bit. The cool thing about radishes are they only take anywhere from like 21 to 30 days for them to go from seed to the actual, you know, leaf and the root itself. So they're great to put in children's gardens because children don't like to wait very long. So it's a great first thing to do for them. And it's something that you can do with success in planning. So you just keep putting them every couple weeks, planting them, planting them, and you'll have them. And if you want to go to the farmer's market or start a little business, it's something great because it's a great cash crop because you're going to get it so quick. Now everything that I grow in my garden and what Doug and I eat here, I look at sort of as an investment on our health because Doug and I are our first you know, health care providers. So I want to put the best thing that I can. And I love these things like um, the radishes, they're in the brassica family. Um, and they're type of a cruciferous vegetable. And cruciferous vegetables like your cabbages and your kales, radish, arugula, things like that are very good for your liver at detoxification. We have all these bad things that, you know, we're breathing in and, and just around us. So we need a lot of detoxification. So these foods like that, the cabbages, your broccolis, your cauliflowers, the radishes, are really amazing to add to your diet. So I try to have some type of cruciferous vegetable into my diet every day. So what's cool about this, I'm gonna have these roasted radishes that we'll have over the next couple days and they will last in the refrigerator you know a few days so I might add them to my salads or I might go ahead and eat them by themselves we can eat them hot or cold and they're really good so great alternative to potatoes and then like I say we're going to be doing a lot with the greens so when I'm using these foods it's basically like food is your medicine so that's what I want to look at when I'm picking out the things that I'm putting in my body now let's go get some fresh parsley from the garden So I'm going to get some parsley that I'm going to cut up and put over the radishes when they're finished. But a little note on parsley, I grow a couple kinds. There's the curly parsley and then the flat leaf parsley. What kind do you guys like better? Do you get the flat or do you get the curly? Because I like them both. It just kind of depends. But what I want to show you is a little trick. And I learned this when I was older and I thought, wow, it really does work. I'm going to get a big bunch of my parsley here. And then you just put it in some water, like so, just like you put fresh cut flowers. And then you could put this in your refrigerator and it will last a couple weeks. And what I do is, it just like with flowers, you might want to drain the water out and uh, maybe cut the bottoms, put it in there. And then when you're ready and you want some parsley, you can just cut it and go ahead and get it from your refrigerator and put it in the things that you want. So if you get it from the store, you get it from a farmer's market or CSAs, and you want it to last longer, that's a great way to keep your parsley fresh. And luckily here, I can just come out to the garden and get it, but I thought you guys would like to know that because it really does, out of all the herbs, this one lasts the longest. 
and parsley does it lasts a very long time so try it 20 minutes later and so I'm going to just go ahead and look at them and flip them and then probably let them go maybe 15 more minutes Yeah, they'll be good in about 15 more minutes. Well, the struggle is real, guys. I had wet it and put the radishes in, and I had turned the oven down instead of up to where I had it at 400. So it was at 400, and then I turned it down, and then when I came back, I was like, oh, no. So it took a little over an hour. But they'll still cook. It still works. So make sure you put your oven to 400. How many of you guys have ever done that? Or how many of you guys ever burnt something and forgot about it in the oven? Because I sure have. Leave a comment below because things like this do happen when you're cooking. But the stories are good. But it, it's ready now, so let's get it out. Yeah, we're cooking in the dark together. Can you see it's dark? I started when it was daylight and now it's night. All right, they look perfect. Let's taste one. Mmm, they're perfect. And the good thing about when you cook these, you know, radishes normally have a bite to them. There's no more bite. So you'll be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised that these turn out really good. So I want you to try them. So the last two things I'm going to do is put a little bit more salt on them now that they're done. And then that parsley that we got in the garden a little earlier. I'm going to use my handy dandy scissors. I can't live without my scissors. I cut everything up. So I'm going to put my parsley on there. And if you guys want to try a different herb, you could. If you want to do oregano, I mean, you could do cilantro, whatever your flavor is. It all works. And I'm just going to kind of mix it all up and put these in a, a little pan. It's a little late. We had our dinner already. So I'm going to save these and use them tomorrow. Probably put them in some salads or just eat them by themselves because they are good cold too. And let me know what you guys are going to do with your radishes and your radish harvest. I would love to hear from you. And stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a garden tour because with all this rain we've been having, the garden is really popping. It's changed a lot from the last time you guys saw it. All right, well, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I will look forward to seeing you guys later. See, I got to get inside. It's getting late. Have some tea before bed. Bye.